Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity RPG tutorial series. Now, in the last episode, we set up a basic quest, which was uh, successful when you went from uh, one location to another, or when we reached a target location, basically. So, we're going to take a look at adding another type of quest, which is to collect a specific item for a quest. So, in order, obviously, to do this, we're going to need an item that we're going to use. So, we're going, we're going to go into our art folder, and into our roguelike sheet here, we're going to use an item, uh, if I can find it here, we're going to use 1316, which is, we've got a lot of items here in this little sheet, or we've got a lot of sprites on this sheet. Let me just get down far enough. It's this little yellow crystal thing here. So I'm going to drop this into the scene. Uh, I'm going to set it to order one in layer so that we can see it when we drop it down here. So there we go, we can see it there. And I'm just gonna give this a circle collider 2D and give it a trigger so that we'll be able to pick it up. And then we're gonna take a look at how we're actually gonna handle this. So if we're gonna have this as an item to be picked up, obviously to start this quest that we're gonna use, we're gonna need a zone to do to start this quest in. So much like we did here where we had a little zone to start it, we're gonna just duplicate this. I'm gonna put it over here. And we'll just drag it down just to keep everything kind of nicely organized. Uh, so we'll walk into this zone, it'll start our quest, and then we'll go and collect this item. So we could do this in pretty much the exact same way as we handled the um, moving to a certain location. So what we could do is when we get to it, we just do the exact same way of going to the end of the quest, and we would maybe add an extra line to. Uh, destroy this item. But instead, we're going to handle it a little bit differently, just to so, just to kind of show different ways you can uh, approach handling these quests. So the way we're going to do this one is basically when we get to this item, it's going to send a message to the quest manager that an item that we're going to call this the crystal. Um, so it's going to send a message to the to the quest manager that the crystal has been collected, and then our quest that is currently active will be looking to see if. A crystal object has been picked up so say if the player picked up um, a sword of some kind the quest would be looking for a crystal but the but the player picked up a sword so it would just ignore it completely so uh, what I'm actually just going to do first as well is go back into our quests here so we have three quests here I'm going to duplicate this one and we'll call it a uh, quest tree and on our script over here, uh, we're just going to make some changes. So we'll make it quest number three, so we'll make sure that we change that. We're going to start the text with uh, just find the crystal. And when our player gets to the end, we'll just say, you got the crystal. Well done. So the final thing we need to do, to make sure this will work, is make sure that we drag quest three into our quest array so that the game actually knows that there, we have a, a quest object in our world here. And of course then we need to actually, on our activation zone here, we need to make sure that, that is activating the right quest. So that'll be quest number three. Okay, so now we're going to need to make some modifications to our scripts and, and create a new script for when we pick up our item. So the first thing we're going to do is modify our quest manager. So we're going to go into our scripts folder, go down to quest manager here, where is, there we go. And we'll open this up in Mono Develop. Actually, I should have that up in here already yet. There we go. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to add an extra line here for a public string uh, item collected. So as I said, what we're going to do is when we pick up an item, we're going to send that, we're going to, basically we're just going to set item collected here to be equal to whatever name we have given to that item. So when we have that here, then we know we can actually check for that on whatever active quest we have. So to do that, we're gonna go into the quest object script. As we know, that's what's on each one of these individual ones. That's our quest object here. So I already have this open. So we're gonna to go to this here. And what we're going to do on our quest object script is rather than create a whole new script for handling specific item quests, we're just gonna add a variable here. We're gonna add a public uh, bool that we call is item quest so that we know if we activate that we're basically saying that this is an item quest rather than any other kind of quest specifically and then we need to know what is the item that we're actually looking for so we're going to say public string 
target item like that and then all we're going to do is when our quest is once our quest has been activated we know we're waiting to see if the player has found the object within the world so what we can do is in the update loop we can just say okay if if this is an item quest is first of all what we want to check so we're saying is item quest because if it's not an item quest we don't need to be checking uh, whether a target item has been set in a quest manager so then what we can do is say okay if it is an item quest then we'll do another check and we'll see if the target item or sorry no not if target item if in our quest manager back over here so in our quest manager we have item collected so we can do as we call it up here the qm so we can say the qm dot item collected if that is equal to whatever our target item is like that then we know that a message must have been sent to the quest manager to pick up the item that we want or to that it has picked up the item that, uh, that we want and then we can go okay in that case what we want to do is call the end quest function which as we know that will just show the text on the screen and run the thing to deactivate the object and stuff like that so that's perfectly fine and the other thing we want to do is empty out the item collected from the quest manager because we know that the item we need is, is now uh, being picked up so we don't need to be checking that anymore so we can just say okay um, on the quest manager item collected is now equal to no so it's perfectly empty for us okay so all that is perfectly fine but now we need to actually create the script for when we go and pick up the item itself which is um, our little yellow crystal down here so to do that we're going to of course need to create a new script and uh, we just wait for the other scripts to compile there for a second there we go I'm going to create a new C sharp script that we will call quest item and we'll load this up here in mono develop now like this give it a second there we go okay so much like we had with the um, the quest trigger script which was for when you walked into a trigger zone we're gonna have uh, we need to know which quest we're actually dealing with here so we're going to create a public int quest number which will be, again be our reference to whatever quest this item is related to and then we'll have a private quest manager called the QM because we need to know uh, what the quest manager is so we can actually send the name of the item when we collect it so in our start function we'll do the usual thing of finding the quest manager in the world so the QM is equal to find object of type quest manager there we go and then we're not going to do anything in our update loop but we are going to check and see if the player enters the trigger zone so we'll use our void on trigger enter 2d collider to the other like that so then what we'll do of course first of all is check make sure that it's the player that's walked into this zone not uh, one of our enemies or uh, random villagers or anything like that so if other dot game object dot name is equal to player then we know we want to actually do something and then the next thing we want to do is check and make sure that the quest this item is related to is actually active within the game same as we've done before uh, for our quest trigger so we'll do pretty much the exact same thing we're going to make sure that the quest isn't completed first of all so we'll say if not on the quest manager oh, the qm that quest completed and the value we want to get from that array is the quest number so we know that our quest number will be three for this particular one at the moment so we want to check if the quest number three has been completed yet and if it's not as we said with our exclamation mark if that's not true then also we want to make sure that um, the the quest object is currently active so that we know that the quest itself is actually active in the world so here we can say the quest manager dot uh, quests 
and we want to use obviously our quest number again why is that uh, just being silly like that and then we want to get the game object and check if it's active so basically we're doing the exact same thing we did on the trigger quest uh, we're just shortening it down to one statement rather than having two if statements as we did back there so we'll put our curly brackets here so now that we know the players entered the zone and the quest is hasn't been completed and the quest is active oh i added an extra letter in there apparently and um, now that we know that all those things are true then what we can do is we can send the name that we have oh we didn't actually add the variable for the name so like i said we want to be able to send to our quest manager the quest name in the item collected and then be able to check it here so we need to make sure that we actually have a name that we're using so here we're going to use a public string uh, just called item name keep it nice and simple so then what we want to do is say okay on our quest manager uh, dot item collected we want to set that to be equal to our item name so say our item name is going to be crystal we will send crystal over to the quest, man quest, quest manager no the quest manager and then here our item collected will now be uh, stored as crystal and then on our quest object that will be checking to see okay is the in the quest manager is that equal to what our target item should be which will be also crystal then it'll go okay that's true so we'll end the quest uh, but one other thing we want to do is obviously when we pick up a quest item like that we want to make sure that we deactivate that object at the same time so we will say game object dot set active false just like that okay so we'll save this and go back into unity and we'll let that compile and now we should be able to just uh, hook everything up for us and make sure it's all working okay so to finish compiling so we'll go to quest tree here first of all so now that we're on quest tree we want to make sure that it is an item quest and our target item is going to be uh, just crystal like that so the important thing to note is that we made this change to the quest object script but because we're only we're using this uh, bool variable like this on our other quests it doesn't actually affect them in any way they're not checking to see if uh, item quest or they're not checking for a target item because we're we're only setting that on whatever one has this being true so uh what we then need to do is actually i'm going to change the name of this just to be uh, crystal just so i can keep it nice and sensible um but we obviously need to add the script we just created to it so we're going to add our quest item script here we go so we know that this is for quest number three and the item name is crystal now the reason we wouldn't want to just um pull it from the name of the object itself is you could be in a situation where you're um spawning your items into the world after the game is already run say you kill a bad guy and an item gets spawned uh, from our prefabs here the thing that would happen then was if you were to try and spawn this crystal object for example whenever an item is spawned in the game its name will have uh, in brackets copy put onto the end of it so we'll end up with an item called crystal copy which obviously wouldn't be the same item as what we're looking for here which is crystal so that's why we don't we don't just send we don't just get the name of the object itself that we're calling it we have to specifically state to ourselves what is this uh, item that we're sending to be collected so we put that in there like that and now we should be able to just run the game and make sure everything is working just fine okay so we'll hit play we get this to start and then we walk down here here we go find the crystal so then we walk down and the crystal is over here and boom we got the crystal and the crystal disappears from the world and just to make sure that everything is working okay we should see on our uh, quest manager here so now our item collected is gone back to being blank i'm just going to run it again just to make sure we can see it all working just the way we want it to um so we start running the game uh, our item collected is blank we walk into the zone then as soon as we go down here we should no we don't even see a flash up it, it it comes up and gets taken away so fast we don't even get to see it flash up here but it does get sent because obviously we're uh, reading it as we're, or 
we're not reading it, but the game is reading it as having been sent and recognised by the quest script itself, which has now been deactivated. So there you go, that's how we can handle um, collecting an item in a slightly different way. And the next thing we're going to do is take a look at how to handle a quest of killing a set amount of enemies. So we're going to take a look at doing that in the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all very soon. Thanks for watching this episode, and if you want to learn more about developing your own games, you can follow the link on screen to my complete 2D platformer game development course on Udemy, where you will learn how to program and build a complete game in Unity 2D with multiple levels, enemies, and unique boss battles. So click the link on screen or in the description below and get the course today.